Hello, welcome to Carton Blue. My name is Dan Rowlandson, coming from Hockley Social Club with John Townley and James Rushton. Thanks for joining us, James. Last time we were here was the live show. How are you? Yeah, I think everyone's no one's turned up this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit more low key this one. Yeah. Uh, John, how are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. Good stuff. Uh, today's video is the Aston Villa sliding door moments, the butterfly effect, whatever phrase you want to use, nine times when Aston Villa's history could have been totally different. So we've each come with three suggestions each. Now, sliding doors, for anyone who, who maybe doesn't know, comes from the 1998 film, Sliding Doors. It means seemingly inconsequential moments that nonetheless alter the trajectory of future events. I feel like I was all consequential, though, you know. Though. Yeah, we probably <laughs> used the, the wrong phrase here, but the butterfly effect, the, yeah. a butterfly flaps his wings in, and the other side of the world's an earthquake is the famous. Yeah. What um, could have happened thing. when, basically? Yeah, basically. So an example that I'm going to give you from another football club so it doesn't spoil the Aston Villa ones coming up. Um, Burn Leno gets injured at Arsenal. Emi Martinez plays and impresses, wins the FA Cup, then moves to Villa, does very well, gets into the Argentina squad. His performances helped them win the Copa America and the World Cup thanks to a last-minute save in the final and his other penalty heroics. Leno's injury against Brighton in 2020 leads to Lionel Messi finally winning the World Cup in 2022. See, like, we have very much picked sliding door, as in the doors <laughs> open rather than <laughs> yeah. the butterfly flapping his wings, which is very much that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's, that's where we're going with this show. It's very obviously a hypothetical the kind of fantasy world of these yeah. things have never happened and never will. It's, uh, but it will open up conversations and we'll have chats about different things. So like I said, we've each got three each. I'd implore people watching to uh, leave their own in the comments because I could think of loads doing this. It was hard to actually narrow it down to three that were worthy of talking about. James, give us one of your potential sliding doors moments, please. I mean, one's like the really, really obvious one. It's Man City getting purchased by uh, Sheikh Mansour yeah. and uh, Abu Dhabi. I mean, a lot of Villa fans are never going to forgive Randy Lerner for kind of giving up the ghost. But the vast amounts of wealth on offer. I mean, day one, it was like we were, I'm sure I was on holiday and I was like, oh, we might get James Milner. And then Man City had been purchased and they bought Rubinho the same day. And I mean, Rubinho didn't end up doing much but it's like a statement it's a time, yeah. massive one yeah so yeah that's a mass that's the doors wide open on that one that's very <laughs> that, obvious and that was as we all know one of the main reasons why randy Lerner thought to practically pull the plug because he couldn't compete it was that, top yeah. four or bust yeah and all of a sudden it became a i suppose a top five then a top six um with tottenham eventually benefiting too so villa had to do so much to kind of get back on track and he wasn't prepared to do it mm. but yeah that, that I think that's one of the biggest sliding doors moments over the past you know, decade or so because without that I think a lot could have yeah. been different and, and, and in football generally generally yeah, yeah. I mean we you know Abramovich was the main sort of the starter I suppose but yeah for Villa that was um, had a huge impact it's a good one to start with really because it, it sounds like it's about Man City but it, it's not is it it's about that Villa were kind of Villa, Man City and Spurs were neck and neck really for one of us is going to break Everton into the top well, four yeah. somewhere. Everton as well around there those clubs would make up fifth to eighth or something generally mm. speaking in terms of like size of the club and their ambitions at the time and you think of like what we've said before on podcasts about like us and Tottenham being neck and neck and then all of a sudden they overtake us massively we get relegated big new stadium for them and now a few years later we think of ourselves as being in a bit better space than Tottenham are Man City just go massively upwards as everyone knows and like you said John Change is kind of the, the face of football as a whole yeah. uh, as much as anything but specifically for Villa that stops them becoming a top four club in, in a sense that because Randy just couldn't compete with that kind of money and Villa thought it's time to kind of step away a bit yeah people always bring up like stuff like it's just inconsequential Blackburn when they won it and stuff and that, but I don't think you've ever had such a vertical yeah, yeah. rise to like Man City and say all you want about that it was allowed wasn't it what happened was fine I mean <laughs> the charges are coming now <laughs> but it, what happened was so, the rubber stamped it wasn't like yeah. there was the fit and proper persons debacles with other clubs it was just straight in done vertical rise yeah. which is bizarre when you know you can probably I mean again a lot of Villa fans won't forgive Randy Lerner but you know they defend uh, Sirius and Edens with the same thing like why should they spend their personal money I mean Randy Lone invested invested and then you see that and you think we spent loads of money didn't yeah. didn't really get him anywhere partly to O'Neill in some aspects yeah. as well of, of overspending on the wrong players or massive wages and things and at some point if you haven't got an endless bucket of cash you kind of have to go well you're not giving me what this investment is should yeah. be so I have to kind of step back and then somebody swoops into Man City somebody that you're competing with with a bottomless pit of cash and you go well 
I try my best, but I can't compete with that. Hmm. Yeah. I, it just makes me laugh sometimes when Tottenham fans have got like, the Levy Out banners and everything. When, if you look at what happened to every other club that was in that sort of melting pot, as we said, or Everton. Um, I think us, Everton, Tottenham were the three. Yeah, we obviously fell fell through the floor. Everton are doing that now, really, and Tottenham have been in the Champions League final in the top four, and then the season that they drop out of Europe, it's you know kind of the end of the world, and it could have been a whole lot worse. For them. Yeah. Really, could have they've, they've right. cemented themselves in the top six, and I think that's breaking up now, and maybe that's why they're so angry. It's yeah. almost a shame that like Brighton and Brentford didn't kind of happen at the same time because he might have Randy Lerner might have looked oh there's a, actually there was a chance yeah because uh, the clubs were doing the same thing at the time like the transfer strategy was just buying blokes yeah. like we had Routledge Salafu whomever you know add to the list yeah. Man City had did the same they they had players they bought and just simply didn't use you know this Scott Sinclair Jack what's his name <laughs> forgettable <laughs> Jack something in the Sunday Jack is it Rodwell Rodwell yeah oh my yeah, yeah um, blast from the past Australia. yeah blast from the past yeah, it wasn't even that long ago it was 10 years weren't it Rocky Santa Cruz um, pl- you know, players like that every club is doing the same thing um, so mm-hmm. if Randy Lerner maybe saw that there's a different way of doing it rather than buying every single bloke he manager sets to buy and the competition back then was actually far less than what it is now in a weird way there's, yeah I mean, Villa are arguably in a better place or a similar place than where they were at that point in time. Um, mm. I'll probably a step back still because so there's so much competition now. So James is right. If Randy Lerner didn't just panic, he probably could have had us knocking on the door still. I've seen each of yours already to make sure that we didn't kind of clash here. But I'm going to go with one of mine because it's of the similar era to what we're talking about here. What if Nemanja Vidic was rightfully sent off in the 2010 League Cup final? Now, again, if... Obviously, like we said, sliding doors here. We, I'm not going to say that Vidic was sent off and we definitely win, but in this podcast, I am going to say that. If he's sent off in the first few minutes of the game and we score the penalty, I think we beat Man United in that League Cup final. Our first trophy for, for what would it have been back then, 14-ish years. And again, that, that whole conversation of what is my investi- investment getting as Randy Lerner, it's, well, we've got a trophy now. And maybe we kick on. Maybe O'Neill doesn't leave that summer because we've just won a trophy and he knows investment is coming. So if Vidic is sent off by Phil Dowd, I think we win a trophy, O'Neill stays, and maybe we do get into... I know Man City is still the the competition like we just talked about. Maybe Villa do push into the the top four at at some point and the next kind of 10 years of decline doesn't even happen. So that's my little butterfly effect of one red card decision possibly means 10 years of decline for Villa. You are correct. If we were to win that, go into Europe and I don't know, um, compete more so, and then learn a, uh, O'Neill stays. There's a different outlook there for sure. Mm. The wait for the cup final, just be. It was one of those days where you almost like, yeah, today's think, you know, yeah, it's a good day. We could do this, it's yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like not- Man United, and it's they're, they're what they were at the time. But you still think, I fancy us here. It's a cup final. Like you never know. Like we are a good side, but. For that to happen in the first week, I still don't get it. If you're given the it decision sets the to tone. give the penalty, how it is it not a tone. red card? If that, um, if that is given, we're playing against 10 men for 80 minutes. I do think genuinely we win yeah. that game and it still hurts me because I was 14, it, 15 at the time and I thought that, this is going to be my first trophy yeah. and it was snatched away. It gives that learner and O'Neill era like that one thing it deserved other than yeah, like, yeah. the Peace Cup's rad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong. And like the, the pre-season friendlies so against the likes of Inter Milan and the Inter-Toto Cup and stuff. <laughs> that's all friendlies, man. All well and good. <laughs> like, the, the heights, the, 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 these are the things we've had to cling to, yeah. right? Those big pre-season for those annual <laughs> statement friendlies. Um, but that would have given it a nice cap other than yeah. that other stuff. And even if O'Neill did leave in that yeah. summer, it would be like, well, I've left with a legacy. I've, yeah. I've won a trophy, but yeah, not to You're be. right. We almost look back on moments, don't we, over that era? Like yeah. yeah. Last minute goal against Everton. The nearly United men, basically. Trafford. Yeah, it needed that tangible success, but... Yeah, didn't happen. Nope. We move on. John, give me one of yours. Mine are a bit more uh, present day, I suppose. That's good. So I'll go back to... When would it be? Twenty January twenty nineteen. <laughs> just the four years ago. When? <laughs> <laughs> time goes. Time goes. That goes does feel like a long time ago. Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> January twenty nineteen. Villa were, I believe, mid table in the championship and not looking like we were going to get promoted. Yeah. And Jack Grealish was out for several months. So when Wolves wanted to sign Tammy Abraham, he made up a little, a, a couple of porkies and said to him that he'd be back within days, within weeks, and he kept saying that for a long time. But he knew he'd be back in March. So, long story short, Tammy was apparently very close to going to Wolves. Yeah. Grealish convinced him not to go because he'd be back from injury much sooner than he was actually going to be. So, I I come up with the idea that if Tammy goes at that point, 
would Villa have got promoted basically I was kind of working back from the because there was so much happening that season it was yeah. a manic season I've got a promotion one as but well that's something that I think um, yeah. I don't know might have been forgotten perhaps I think if we don't have Tammy although we had some really good players including Grealish potentially we still get in the playoffs and maybe we still go up I don't yeah, know yeah. but to have a player of that quality in the championship um, a player that was so integral for that team anyway who knows what could have been and if we don't go up that season we then lose Grealish we then mm. probably don't get Mings back at yeah. least on loan probably not permanently because it's been 20 million too much uh, too much money Tammy would he come back probably not so that whole team would have been um, sort of stripped away all because uh, Grealish didn't lie <laughs> to Tommy Abraham about his <laughs> you got a feel for Tammy there haven't you? <laughs> As a new, if you're a neutral you got to think that's not right dude Basically, Grealish lies to Tammy Abraham and says, I'm back, I'm back, mate. I'll be back from injury next week. Tammy says, all right, I won't go to Wolves, yeah. who were in the Premier League at the time, their first season, back promoted. I'll stay at Villa, let's try and get this club promoted. And by Grealish lying and saying he'll be back sooner than he actually was, Tammy doesn't make that transfer and ultimately goes on to get promotion at Villa. Yeah, yeah, nice. If you want a mad butterfly effect from that, though, go on. does his success at Villa give him the role he had at Chelsea and the platform to move to Roma yeah. where he then got an injury that actually prevented him returning yeah like oh, no. that's <laughs> <laughs> oh, what would have happened if he'd gone to Wolves he went to, that, that's you're playing at Wolves on that that's a strange one because that that obviously um, Jimenez didn't know I don't know if they played yeah, two yeah, up yeah. front maybe maybe not but they had Jota as well I think so they would have had a bit of a formidable forward line if they did buy him. They got Giroud because I didn't know that first season. Wolf. Yeah, it would have been a good investment though to buy Tammy, presumably, for what, 20 million probably? At that point, it's worth more than that. It's one of those like Twitter flashpoints that has everyone looking at the rules as well and everyone's <laughs> like application of it is like completely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on then, James, give us another one of yours. Benteke and Dalf moving like at the sa- in the same summer. Yeah. Like that's everything that happened after the recruitment, whatever, Tim Sherwood, Remy Gard. Um, the change in CEO the change in the structure but losing like your two figureheads yeah. and being completely unable to replace them I mean they did they did try I, <laughs> yeah. I'll admit I genuinely thought we had a decent summer no we did <laughs> like, <laughs> hand on heart it was quite good and I thought oh we'll be finishing 12th this year hand, hand so on heart oh, that is on paper correct I, all, I think yeah. like Amavi Veratu um, Idris Agana yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it could have worked Michael Richards very, very at the start mate <laughs> for four minutes <laughs> with Johnny Evans for us like, oh, but that, this, yeah. this thing so I mean brilliant. now it looks ridiculous yeah. Yeah. but at, not out of the realms of possibility at the time to yeah, believe it's that. a big loss to lose those two players but you thought we've recruited potentially okay here like Lescott was player of the season wasn't he Albin the year before on a, on a free <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah in hindsight yeah, yeah. that squad was just shattered but like nobody could come in and yeah the older stuff Gabby said about the click no, nobody would just took it and led yeah and that's what they needed Delph to just be horrible Really? Yeah, I, I had I made a list of about ten here and narrowed it down to three. And Benteki staying was on there. Delph not doing his U turn was on there. As Delph well. leaving was that was a big but deal. Benteke was obviously hugely important. We all know why. But Delph was Delph was brilliant for us. Yeah, I really like Delph. Player. That was that would be like in the championship if Tammy did go and then Jack went. You know what? I'm off. Of, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm off yeah. to Tottenham now. See ya. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> for, for me, for the Benteki one, I'd gone with again. I'm, I won't go into it too much. If Benteki stays, I think he's our all-time Premier League goal scorer now because the, the Gabby record is pretty crap anyway do really think, I think. do you think we would have gone down if Benteke stayed no nah, definitely not we'd have stayed because he was keeping us up anyway I reckon he'd been injured though like we'd have, well, yeah, we'd have possibly, lost him like, that, all, sure. all the signings you're on about in that season Rudy, Rudy Gestead and Jordan Ayo playing up front if Benteke's playing up front and he's scoring 15 goals the rest of those players settle in better and we don't get relegated I think and then he gets Gabby's record is something like 64 Prem goals, I think, which the game's played. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's like one in four. Benteki was absolutely smashing if that. If he had three or four more years in the Premier League with us, then I'd totally agree. But yeah. I just, I'm not sure if it would stay. I'm not saying he'd have smashed it in that one season. Yeah, I think he would have stayed. The only thing to years, Tim yeah. Shaw's credit is like, as well is like he was like a Benteke whisperer. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. He just got something yeah. out of him. Yeah. Well, didn't he? Yeah. The Tottenham. Yeah, what if Adebayo yeah. actually signed and <laughs> didn't have the fear of God and pulled out of it? What if he just signed? He was correct though. Like, God God well, knew what was happening it was God's yeah, plan he, was, he, was right like, he knew what was happening dude <laughs> I'll go with one of mine next because I'm still in the championship era what if Glenn Whelan scores his penalty against Preston Mate, Steve Bruce has gone the next match that like, don't, yeah he might, he might have got a cup yeah that's the thing though who did we have the next match was it oh I can't remember oh, what was it, oh, was it no, Millwall was it Millwall Smith's first game was Swansea I think we played Millwall away 
with the care before taker. Smith came in, I think. Yeah, that Could sounds... Be, yeah, we played it with uh, McDonald, I'm sure. And we played four mm. right-backs. That pressing game was mad, wasn't it? Obviously, it finished 3-3. I don't <laughs> know when that penalty came. Would it have been the 4-3 winner? Or would it would we have gone 4-2 up, maybe? Oh. Whatever it was, let's say it wins us the game. You're right, I think Bruce is ultimately sacked anyway. But those couple of weeks, even, might be vital to Villa not getting the charge they have later in the season. Yeah. So that might have held Bruce on maybe. for another three games. Yeah. And then Smith isn't available. Things like that are possibly the, this kind of ripple effect that we're talking about. I think, I don't know if it mattered that the, the result. In the, the bigger picture, no. I mean, if you've got a man who is literally getting things thrown at him. Yeah. And I mean, the, the thing, I always imagined it was like bounced off his head, but it was literally like... Yeah, I don't you know, think it wasn't like a near him, yeah. I thought it was like proper chucked up, bounced off him, you know what I mean? But like, to the point, if you've got a manager who's having getting stuff thrown at him... Glenn Whelan scoring a penalty is largely irrelevant. It, yeah, it's, it's yeah. largely <laughs> inconsequential. You're right, John. Like, I, we need questions I would, answered I would love about that. to know how a cabbage gets into Villa Park. Mate, how do you, you can't even in? take a bottle cap. That's what I mean. Like, yeah, I was maybe different back then, but you get patted down and stuff. It's like, is that your phone? Yeah. Is that, is that, your, is that your wallet? Yeah. Is that your cabbage? Yeah, I got my cabbage. <laughs> no, it's my Absolutely yeah. bizarre. John, let's go to one of yours. Then me and James have done two each, so your turn. I'll move on to, I don't know the date specifically, but it was second year, third year of being back in the Premier League. One of Dean Smith's final games. So what would happen if Villa didn't collapse in the final 10 minutes might have been less against Wolves mm, yeah obviously 2 up and cruising would have been a really good result because obviously we'd have come we'd have lost two games before then because we lost five didn't we overall so two games before then um, yeah. would have been a good result just to get back into or back to winning ways against a good Wolves team but we obviously collapsed in a really bad way lose the game then, still, still haunts me that game then we go good. to Arsenal and lose I think 3-1 and then Southampton and then obviously Southampton and then yeah that's uh, Smith sacked after then so but I, I think that was the key point you, you can't go 2-0 up and then collapse like that and it not have an effect on those next two games anyway so yeah, yeah. I think that was the tipping point for Smith and I think if we won that go to Arsenal you can you know get whatever result and then you go to Southampton get a result maybe you wouldn't well, be sacked that, after that was Southampton bottom at the time or was that the season after I don't know might have been the season after we were close know, I'm not sure <laughs> don't um, cram that anyway, far off yeah. but I don't think Smith would have been sacked having lost four out of five and not five do you know maybe later in the season if we went on a poor run of form potentially that changes yeah. but I just think in that moment that was um, that was like curtains uh, it had that feeling about it as well uh, I remember it just thinking what, I was what, right what behind that here? Nevis free kick and everyone knew that was going to go yeah. in and it had to happen in the most you know that awkward way possible it is the worst when you just know yeah. Yeah. you know it's like the day when you know you're going to win like mm. Brighton play a final League yeah, Cup finals yeah. where we haven't won <laughs> but knowing you're going to lose is a horrible sinking feeling because yeah. it is and you can feel like the, the crowd feels it the players feel yeah, it the manager like, feels it sickening that they brought it back to two all that was deflating enough and you almost thought yeah. what if they score this that's like <laughs> as I think as a football team as well you, you, that's when you would just fold isn't it because you're like mm. they have just got us and we cannot do you know they throw everything at you mm. horrible we've all got one each now left um, in, time, in times order James, yours is from the, the late 2010s. Mine is promotion era again, and yours is Premier League. So we'll go in, in time order. Uh, yeah. James, take it away with the final sliding doors moment. Yeah, losing in, in Russia. The, the fight, I went to the, the home game, like European lights. The first, I, wanted, like, I wanted to go to the Ajax one so bad, and I was so annoyed. All my, I think all my school friends went. And I was at home watching on Channel 5 on a grainy TV. I mean, it's just like 2009. So it's a t- but, you know, the, t- the advancement in technology <laughs> has thrilled us all. Um, but seeing that Ajax game in the Martin Larson celebration and getting my limited edition program with this, like, shiny Martin Larson. And I was like, tonight's the night, lads. Like, it's happening. You know, it's a proper game now. It's not a group stage game. We've got to win this. Like, you, yeah. I mean, you have to win the groups. But, like, the knockout, like, at the home one as well, the home leg. Got to put a performance in. And I think the fight... The, the, the grit that we showed to just like hold steady I think, I'm sure like, it was Craig Garner who scored and then Wagner Love he, like the, the so. most recognisable man on the pitch like just a pure threat the whole time and you're thinking there's an edge to this and there's an edge that we've got and we can take this to Russia and hopefully give as good as we you know we got at Villa Park mm. obviously not the case so listening on radio and we're playing kids that as a you know, teenager at the time I barely heard of. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, for credit, like, a f- fair few of them went on to have stunning careers. But at the time, I think that was, I know, I know Martin explained it on the uh, first name terms. <laughs> yeah, <your laughs> Martin explained it on one of the podcasts that you did. 
I don't I hate that explanation. Yeah, I don't that's, care. that's the justification I was going to throw back at you there. Well, that I you, know, you have to lay the dinner on, but like people went over to to Moscow in the freezing. Yeah, yeah, I get all that side of it, but his argument was that Villa want Champions League, we want Champions League. If we kind of not throw the Moscow games, that's not the phrase at all, but we go and play the kids and we're prepared to lose it. We can focus on the league and get top four. That was his kind of explanation yeah. or justification. Would we have got get that. Champions League if we won the competition? That's I a great don't question. Think so I don't I doubt it. I would presume that we wouldn't. It was yeah. the, the UEFA Cup. I think that was the last year. It was the UEFA one of last year. So I don't. Give you. I am not like a hundred percent on us. You but imagine if we got Champions League by winning that, that we wouldn't have done Moscow yeah, exactly. in the yeah, way we did. So I just I understand think kind of focusing on the league. But if you're going to do that, you've got to get top four then to justify it. To drop off the, and still, and still I guess you make the risk, again. but it's not like and I, I don't like disrespecting the League Cup. But it's not like it is the secondary domestic competition. Mm. It's the primary cup competition that you are in. Yeah. It's like going to the FA Cup semi final, quarter final, going. You know what? <laughs> Sorry, mm. <laughs> I've got to focus on the league, and it's like that's not right. Like, I no matter which way you cut it, and I get it. Like, I can put. I'd have probably done the same thing hypocritically, you know, if I wanted to oh, win, get in the Champions League. But as a fan, mate, it was the last thirty-two as well. Like Matt says a lot of time. Yeah. I'll be almost like we reinvented that it was like a, a quarter-final or a semi-final. It was the yeah. first knockout game, and yeah. you probably think we're still good yeah, enough to get think through you, this. I don't necessarily think you go on and win, but you have to just show up. In yeah. the, you know, you qualify for that competition. You're like. You've earned your place, sir, and you're like, nah. Yeah, shame. You can only win that competition by turning up, and we didn't turn yeah. up. Yeah. But if you win that competition, and that's a big if still after after Moscow, it's something you can use, and it's something again that the, that caps that area, and yeah. like you can then you can say all the bad things about Lerner and Mino Neil, but actually you can look back and go, we won a, a European competition again, and we mm. don't have to look yeah. so far back, you know, generations ago now, mm. to a, a good success. Same so argument about was. Uh, about the League Cup, isn't it? You need that tangible. Helps Villa buy players as well. Yeah, and they yeah, were yeah. buying players, so. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about the noise, by the way. If you can hear anything in the background, we're at Hockley Social Club and there's stuff going on. So, um, yeah, forgive us for that. Um, my final one is what if Sam Johnston saves Tom Kearney's shot in the 2018 playoff final? Um, now, I'm going to take that with that Fulham don't win and Villa win and Villa get promoted that year, a, a year earlier than they actually do. Dr. Tony is still in charge. Steve Bruce is the manager. A whole different set of circumstances unfold from that is, is my kind of um, message here that we weren't ready to get promoted in hindsight. We didn't, we didn't know that at the time. That Fulham game felt disgusting at, at full time. I, I hated how that felt losing it. You didn't that. know how bad it was as well. Uh, yeah, and Worst f- was a few weeks come. later, you know, so about the, the administration. The stink of the heat and everything. The yeah. day is just. It went so quickly. Like, yeah, just like you a flash feel it unfolding in front of your goal, eyes. Like, this is not off. Can we score off full time? Yeah, it's just, just a very strange, strange. Remember when Grealish went on that little and you're like, this is it. Yeah. And it just yeah. not the not the year, was it? Yeah, there was no one grabbing should have laid it off to someone and he didn't oh, yeah so grab, many grabbing in that game not good but bad memories of that and just yeah you think Grealish is going to go now Villa are going to have to sell players what's going to happen and then it all comes out about the tax stuff and the administration it's like whoa we're, yeah, the club we're in trouble here like, blew up, we were it? gambling on promotion that we would be able to pay off all these things with the Premier League money what happens now that we don't I know that that kind of almost sounds like the sliding doors moment Villa don't get promoted and all this bad stuff happens if we do get promoted Dr. Tony being there when we don't really know what he was doing, what money he had access to, and whatnot, like that could have been a recipe for disaster in the Premier League. And you know, we could have been know. promoted and relegated straight away and in much more serious problems. So, in a, in a roundabout way, Tom Kearney scoring that goal put Villa in a better place. Yeah, we are, we are our club to Fulham. <laughs> yeah, basically, doing a Fulham. You'd like to think that in the second words, we're just waiting in the wings, whatever would happen. <laughs> yeah, possibly, yeah, possibly, yeah. But <laughs> if we don't know that, and yeah, if we went up. We could have spent a bit beyond our means and then got relegated or not anyway. At all. Like, I yeah. don't. I, we, I mean, we genuinely don't know, but it was a scary prospect, whatever. So. If it was any other club than Villa, the way we acted, not just with Shear, but um, be- slightly before him and after the spending and um, kind of the frivolousness of it, any other club wouldn't exist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The fact it was Villa somehow saved us because I mean that summer we were like selling the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, <we're, laughs> you know the car park. <laughs> dead and buried, basically. <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah, horrible, I don't think time. people realise how bad that was. No, no. But I was like, I don't know if Blues have had that 
that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it, it almost sounds like, like I said, losing the playoff final leads to this bad things, and that was the moment winning the final would have solved all that, and those the administration and whatnot would never have been on the cards. But it's not it's even what, like what would have happened in the Premier League if we weren't didn't have access to money and Doctor Tony pulls out. And, yeah, it's not even a uh, derby, you know, getting dock points. It's like <laughs> there is just nothing. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gone. Nothing. So almost getting promoted, not getting promoted that year was a blessing in disguise. That yeah. the following year we were much more prepared for it. NSWE back the back is the he, club. Blah, he's still blah, on Twitter. Blah. Dr. Tony. Yeah. I think the accounts still exist, but I don't, don't think he tweets anymore. He, went, he had a bit of a COVID stage there, and he was like, Didn't think I'm COVID making the mask stats, don't worry, I'm doing something. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, cool, Ultimately you do bizarre. you, King. That's all, all three of ours done. John, to close the show, your final sliding doors moment, please. Final sliding doors is, what if <laughs> this isn't... So what I've, if I've my... seen this, and I don't know where you're going with it. Okay. <laughs> so what if Michael Beale stayed at Villa? And I don't think there would be a huge uplift in terms of, oh, Villa would be okay and would be where we are now. Absolutely not. I'm not suggesting that. But if Michael Beale stayed at Villa and didn't go to QPR, we'd have had a full pre-season. We wouldn't be the shambles that we were, I don't think. I, I really don't think, we're, in my opinion, I think Michael Beale was so important to what Gerard was doing at Villa. That's why we weren't horrific when Gerard first came in. We were still, you know, mucking yeah, around. Yeah, we we yeah. weren't appalling and... Don't get me wrong, there weren't too many signs that we were improving either, but we wouldn't have won 2 and 11, I don't think. Hmm. If we had won, say, I don't know, 4 and 14, 5 and 15, something like that, we would have just been bobbing along throughout the season. I don't think Gerard would have been sacked. Um, although there were sort of question marks over how we ended the, the, the season, hmm. I don't think he would have been sacked 11 games in. And if it was, I don't know, say he got sacked in February or something like that, or not sacked at all, because we were just about in mid table, because that was around where Villa was supposed to be this season really I don't think we were expecting yeah. to challenge for European football I think Gerard said 8th was the target so say if we were in about 11th or 12th you know where Crystal Palace were something like that would he be sacked? Probably not maybe at the end of the season potentially I don't know but would an Imery come in? I don't know it's just loads of different questions and I just don't mm. think we would have been that bad if Beal stayed basically we wouldn't have been a whole lot better I'm not suggesting that but I don't think we would have been to a point where it was there has to be a change after 12 games whether um you know, whether fans wanted him to go or not, I don't think Suarez would have pulled the plug if we were not that bad, basically. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Again, that's, a, that's one of those ones that's a blessing in disguise that Gerard being sat when he was means that we can go and get Unai Emery and he yeah. then gets mm. us to where we are now. Yeah, so maybe, so. maybe you could flip in say sliding doors was if Bill didn't uh, go, then maybe we wouldn't have Emery or we wouldn't yeah, have had yeah. the uplift so soon and yeah. not be in Europe, things like that. But I think Bill going was very... When Gerard first came in, he said, oh, uh, Michael Bill's, you know, much better tactician than me or much better, much better coach who I've got 20 years left to get to his level well what, therefore what would you Beale, say that <laughs> Beale, Beale must be the the manager really like, let's not kid ourselves yeah, yeah. he's clearly the main guy then and you're uh, sort of the face of it and him going was detrimental to everything that was going to happen in the following weeks and months at Villa so I think the lack of you know the arm around the shoulder stuff after Dean's, I think it was a sharp wake up call because maybe that old school approach does work in places. Clearly, it did at, at, at Rangers for a bit, but with the way they took to the Villa dressing room, I don't think I don't know if if it would have lasted anyway. Because as much as you say Michael Bill's ideas worked, did they get it across in the best manner? I don't. If Neil Critchley then came in and they couldn't do it then. Something was Neil from Critchley. the. What was the point of that? It's mad how quickly things changed. That a year ago today we were preparing for a pre-season under Steven Gerrard, thinking, mm, like you said, kind of detached. Where's this going? Like losing his right hand man, blah blah. All these things kind of happen. Fast forward to today, and it's when's Unai Emery back in charge? Like yeah. when's Unai Ball back? When do we play Warsaw? Like I don't know when this video comes out, whether pre-season started or not. But like as we record it, it's like get us back. I want to see Villa play again, and that excitement in just twelve months is totally different now. Yeah. yeah, precisely that. You, you look, you're looking forward to it, and um, it will be a really exciting season anyway. I think can't wait for that Warsaw game, basically, and then yeah. America, two friendlies in a two, in two days, Lazio Valencia. That will be exciting, mm. and then Newcastle the week after. So it's it's going to come quickly as well. That's we're only a month away from the season. Oh God. Start. I know, yeah. Jeez, it's mad, isn't it? <laughs> Six <laughs> weeks. That's it for this video. Uh, the nine nine times Aston Villa's history could have been vastly different uh, please get involved in the comments down below there'll be absolutely loads of suggestions here and there's probably enough if people enjoyed this for us to do a part two because like I said I, I could have thought of, of 10, 12 quite easily so um, John, James thank you very much for your time and your um, your input thank you very much for watching this video get involved in the comments down below subscribe to Claret and Blue and we'll see you again very soon